Here's some of the stories trending this week at NASA. On September 2nd, a Soyuz spacecraft launched from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan with Expedition 45 Soyuz Commander Sergei Volkov of the Russian Federal Space Agency and visiting crew members Andreas Mogensen and Aidan Anbatov. Two days later, the trio docked to the International Space Station and were greeted by the crew on board, including NASA's Scott Kelly and Chell Lindgren. Volkov will spend six months on the station while Mogensen and Ambatov are scheduled to return to Earth after eight days. On September 4th at the Kennedy Space Center, NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden and Kennedy Director Bob Cabana were among the officials who gave remarks at an event hosted by Boeing to mark the opening of the company's facility at Kennedy and to reveal a new name for the CST-100 spacecraft it's developing that will launch NASA astronauts from the United States to the space station. Boeing's newly dubbed CST-100 Starliner spacecraft and commercial crew and cargo processing facility, formerly NASA's Orbiter Processing Facility 3, are prime examples of how the agency's commercial crew program is working with American industry to forge the nation's evolving global space economy and continuing U.S. leadership in human space exploration. At Marshall Space Flight Center, a crane recently positioned the first pieces of steel for the 215-foot-tall test stand being constructed for NASA's Space Launch System rocket. The completed test stand will be used to conduct various stress tests on the liquid hydrogen tank of the SLS's massive core stage to replicate the forces it will endure during launch. The SLS will carry astronauts and NASA's Orion spacecraft on deep space missions, including to an asteroid placed in lunar orbit and ultimately to Mars. During an August 31st event in Bangkok, Thailand, NASA Administrator Bolden helped launch Savir Mekong, a joint project with the U.S. Agency for International Development to bolster regional environmental monitoring in five countries in the lower Mekong region of Southeast Asia. The SAFIR program allows governments and resource administrators to use Earth observations and geospatial technologies for natural disaster and resource planning. The center is one of three SAFIR hubs now operating in developing regions of the world. NASA has begun a long-term study into the ecological impacts of the rapidly changing climate in Alaska and northwestern Canada. The Arctic Boreal Vulnerability Experiment, or ABOVE, is part of a broad effort to study the environmental and societal effects of climate change, such as the thawing of permafrost, wildfires, and changes to wildlife habitats. The effort will combine on-the-ground research with data from NASA satellites, airborne instruments, and other agency programs and missions. NASA's high ice water content mission concluded recently. The nearly three-week campaign included flights in a DC-8 aircraft south of Florida near convective storms. The goal was to evaluate a new radar configuration's ability to detect ice crystals produced by deep convection storms in the tropics and subtropics. The ice particles can accumulate in jet engines, leading to loss of power or engine failure. And that's what's up this week at NASA. For more on these and other stories, follow us on social media and visit www.nasa.gov/twan.